Hey, what's up you guys? I'm your host Ryu, uh, here on Christmas Day, in my kitchen, uh, about to cook food. This is not an instructional video, but you may learn something. Uh, I'm learning stuff. This is my first time cooking what we're cooking today. We're cooking uh, a prime rib, right here. Uh, I have so far heavily seasoned it uh, with salt and pepper overnight and left it to sit in the fridge open covered overnight. Uh, and we've been leaving it on the counter to rest so that it comes to a room temperature and it's easier to cook that way. If you just take something from the fridge and like throw it in the oven, it takes longer to cook. So you gotta let it come to, to, come to rest at room temp. We are going to preheat our oven to 250. We're using the convection oven. We're gonna like dress it up in this pan just for ease, but then we're gonna put it on a cookie sheet before we put it in the oven, so uh, don't get comfy. We're gonna wet a paper towel and put it under our cutting board to stop it from slipping. If you get nice countertops, you'll probably slide around. No grippies on the bottom of your thing. There we go. So, we've got avocado oil. You could also use clarified butter. We've got some heads of garlic. We're gonna take out some cloves. We're gonna just stick it in there with a paring knife. All right, we got one clove already. I'm gonna cut the end off here. I am slicing the cloves of garlic just to uh, release some of those juices, make it a little smaller. I might just make slivers and just stick it in the meat. We are going to save time by using avocado oil so we don't have to clarify our butter. So the herbs that um, the recipe I'm following calls for is herbs de Provence, which I don't have, so we're gonna like, you know, uh, improvise. Herbs de Provence is mostly the stuff that you find Italian seasoning plus a few extra greeneries. So we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna use some Italian seasoning in this situation. We are using some oil to stop the seasonings from drying out and the meat, obviously. And we are using dry herbs instead of fresh herbs because they won't burn to a crisp the same way the fresh herbs will. We're gonna use some thyme since that's not my uh, Italian seasonings. So bone side down, we're gonna put it on our cookie sheet rack and then we're gonna just put it in the oven for a little bit. We're gonna check on that in like two hours. I have a five and a half pounder. Uh, the recipe I followed is a seven pounder for three and a half hours. So we're gonna check it in two. Meanwhile, we're gonna get ready to do everything else that we need to do for the rest of the day. So next I gotta start working on deviled eggs. Everybody loves deviled eggs. Now we make the eggs of the devil. This is my little egg guy. It's like little penguins. They make my eggs safe. There we go. Look, look, look. So I've got my six eggs for the deviled eggs, okay? That goes in the pot, right? Alexa, set a timer for eight minutes. I have two extra eggs because sometimes my egg whites don't peel the best. 
All right. We stand scallions in this house. Our eggs are gonna be boiled soon, so we gotta get the ice. We just dumped the whole ice tray right in here, okay? We got some water going. I'm gonna crack salt into the water. Alexa, stop. Once your robotic house slave beeps, pull out the eggs. My mom made me these oven mitts. Do you like them? Crack them a little bit, throw them in the ice bath. There we go. I'm known for doing way too much, so I also have little baby mushroom caps that I'm gonna turn into like stuffed mushrooms, I guess. I've never done that before either, but we're gonna try it. So I've actually cooked mushrooms on the grill, so I assume uh, stuffed mushrooms in the oven isn't that much different, considering it's almost like a stuffed mushroom when I do it on the grill. So I'm just gonna pick out like the bigger mushrooms from my little container first. Cause it'll hold the most stuff. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Thirteen. Oh, thirteen feels right, right? When you store your mushrooms, you gotta put a paper towel with them or they get smushy faster, y'all. Just so you know. I usually just keep them in the container just like this and just put a little paper towel over the top. It, it like whisks the moisture away. We're gonna wash our mushies. before we gut them, you know, as one does. Always wash the mushies, they're dirty. And now we've got some cleaned up mushies. So now we do is make sure we take the stems and the insides out. So we're just gonna like take that. So we're just taking the tops off like this. Once the top's off, I'll just put it in the bowl. Really simple, just a small click, twist. All this stuff we're gonna carve out too. We're not there yet, we're just twisting stems. So now you've taken your stems off, you've got mushroom caps that look like this, right? They got like this little fluffy do on the outside and it's got like the ribs on the inside. We're gonna carve that out with a spoon. I'm gonna scrape that inside stuff out. Doesn't have to be perfect, just enough. This is what it should look like. It should call it out, the little ribbies are out, and that fluffy stuff is gone. Just put it like a little mushroom bowl. All right, so now I'm gonna take my mushrooms. I'm gonna flip them in some oil. What am I gonna use? Uh, most people would say use olive oil, and normally I would agree, but I like canola oil, so fuck what everybody else says, I'm doing what I want. We're gonna flip this shit around. Perfect. Okay, so we got two pans for our mushrooms, right? Now, here's where I'm just gonna start making some shit up. Uh, I'm gonna mince up some of this garlic. I'm gonna melt some butter and just throw some fucking breadcrumbs in there just to make, make a paste. I don't know, and I'm just gonna fill the mushroom caps with it. I don't have stuffing. You should probably use stuffing. 
but panko and breadcrumbs are just as fine. How much am I putting in? I don't know, I'm just throwing some breadcrumbs in there. Let's get a little whisk going here. This whisk is my favorite whisk. I don't know how long ago I got it, but I've had it a long time. All right, so we've got like paste going on here, see? It's breadcrumbs, it's butter, it's garlic. I'm gonna throw some cheese in there. All right, I got that good shit. I got craft, right? Throw the rest of that cheese in there. Stir that up. That's for all those hydrate freaks on Twitch. You're welcome. That's a free hydrate. break up that cheese ball, and then stir it all up into our mixture. Okay, you know what this is missing? Not salt. Uh, the pebby. It's pepper instead. Because we used salted butter, so there's plenty of salt in it. Mmm, smells good. Okay, we're on the right track here. I feel like it's missing something. And now we stuff the mushrooms with the paste. So it should be like mostly breadcrumbs and cheese with the butter kind of compacting it all together and some minced garlic. All right, so now we're making mac and cheese, obviously, because extra, right? You gotta let this shit come to like room temp, okay? So first we need to make a roux, which is butter and flour. You make like a paste, okay? Whenever you do mac and cheese, you do cheddar first because cheddar takes longer to melt than mozzarella. Mozzarella has a, a lower melting temperature. I usually use the shredded stuff even though people say it's bad for you. It's just easier than having to cut everything. I've got a sharp yellow cheddar and I've got a mild white cheddar. So whenever you use milk, you use whole milk for mac and cheese for less moisture. You also use whole milk mozzarella, not skim milk, because the skim makes water. And then you'll have like watery mac and cheese. Nobody wants that. It doesn't really matter what brand of cheese you use as long as you're using whole milk. Whole milk cheese, okay? It's important. Don't forget that. It's gonna be in the motherfucking test. Whole milk, not skim. All right, we got all of our cubed up cheese. For the pasta, we're gonna use 
uh, baby rigatonis because I like little Z's, okay? I, don't, I know you usually use elbow casseroles or uh, casserole elbows or, you know, shells, but I like these ZD boys. And we're still just stirring our cheese like all the time. Apparently I wasn't recording when I added this in. But I'm using whipped cream cheese. This is the best shit you can put in your in your cheese. It gives it a really creamy texture. I like literally used like half a container. I, you can't really see because of my light. Uh, it's half a container, trust me. Uh, in small scoops, and you just break that down into your cheese. If you don't do mac and cheese with this, you're missing out. Seriously. Don't doubt me. I'm like a mac and cheese master. Look at this shit. The cheese don't lie, bro. And you're just gonna like burr, beat your cheese up, okay? Break that shit down into a cheese sauce. We're gonna check on this pasta again. We're gonna add a little bit of whipping cream. Like splash. Beating the cheese up. If you don't add cream cheese to your mac and cheese, you're missing out, like seriously. You're like, what are you doing? We're gonna add in Parmesan cheese. I use Kraft, you can use whatever you want, but Kraft is where it's at, bro. How much do you shake in? Like, enough until it feels right, bro. Like, basically, you're looking to thicken up your cheese sauce with some of the Parmesan. That way you got like all different kinds of cheeses in here. If you make mac and cheese like this, you're gonna have like the cheesiest mac and cheese at the party. Do I need cheese for anything else? No, okay. Now that we're nearing the end of blending our cheese sauce together, now is when we add the garlic powder to it because you don't want it to burn early on or overcook, so. Now we'll add our seasonings to it as it's melding towards the last end. I'm gonna add some pepper. Lots of pepper. Something that I personally like to do to give it a little zing is crushed red pepper, okay? I can't do too much because it'll burn my mom's tummy. Only a little bit. Alexa, how much time on timer? Bet. Thanks, house slave. Oh my God, it smells so good though. Not that side of the shaker, haha, <laughs> almost had me. I keep doing this thing where I'm not recording yet. So here you go, here's another cheese sauce pour. If your mac and cheese doesn't sound like this, there's something wrong with it. Sounds like your mom last night. We've got our breadcrumbs.
You don't want the breadcrumbs to be too thick. Nobody likes really crunchy mac and cheese. But you should have a little layer of it on top where it like just barely covers it across the entire amount. Looks like, you know, the beach. We're slicing thin pats of butter for the corners so your breadcrumbs don't burn. We're doing like really thin slices of butter. That's what your mac and cheese is gonna look like, bro. This is the mac and cheese, ready to go in the oven. So now we had our timer go off for the meat. We're gonna have to see uh, if it's ready to come out yet. So, it's been two hours for my five and a half pounder. We're gonna test to see if it's internal temp is 120 yet or not. Don't use your thermometer against the bone. Let's see what it says. We're not even close yet. All right. Alexa, set a timer for half an hour. Screwed up my egg before. Made soft boiled. Had to make hard boiled. So we're a little bit behind on schedule today. So right now we're having the eggs and we're taking the yolks out. And we're putting our half of the eggs on the plate. So we're breaking up our yolks. We're gonna add in some mayonnaise and some yellow mustard to start. How much? I don't know, just make it wet. Same thing with the mayonnaise. Not a ton. Squirting in there. Stir it up. All right, so now we get a nice mixed up egg paste, okay? You add in some sriracha. This negates kneading paprika on there. Not too much, just a little. Get your ground pepper. We're using scallion as a garnish. Now we'll put these in the fridge until they're ready to be eaten. Alexa, set a timer for 35 minutes. Again, I'm using canola oil because I love it. Don't care. Thank you. 
Now we have tented the rib with tin foil, so it's going to rest for about 45 minutes. So all the juices go back in there, and then we can just like fire it up at 500 for about 10 to 15 minutes for the crust on the outside. Got potatoes. 